Station, this is Houston. Are you ready for the event? Yeah, and Station's ready for the event. Lollipop Theater Network, this is Mission Control Houston. Please call Station for a voice check. I can hear you. Station, this is Ryan Johnston, the Lollipop Theater Network. How do you hear me? And hi there. Uh, we hear you loud and clear. Welcome aboard the International Space Station. Okay. Can you hear me? Yeah, we sure can hear yeah, you. Sure. We got you loud and clear, okay. and uh, welcome Great. aboard the Thank International you. Space Station. Thank you so much. Thank you, Bob and Samantha, for taking time with us today and your busy schedule. Thanks for all that you do up there uh, for the space program. Uh, I'm Ryan Johnson. I'm with Lollipop Theater Network. I'm a board member, and um, we, are, we bring uh, movies and entertainment to pediatric patients nationwide. And uh, today we have some questions from some of the children in the children's hospitals. Um, if you'd like to answer some questions. Uh, first question comes from Alana from UCLA, Santa Monica. And she would like to know how space was made. Wow, that's a uh, that is a great question and a very deep question, uh, and I'll say that that's uh, one of the reasons we're here. Is I think uh, you know scientists and and all of us aren't really sure you know how the universe and how space was made, and that's one of the things that you know we get to uh, research here on the International Space Station. Is there uh, we're a great observatory for lots of different instruments that look out at space and also down at the Earth uh, to answer lots of questions just like that. So uh, bottom line is I would say we don't know yet, but, uh, but we're all working to try and find those kinds of answers. Great. Uh, Lana has another question. How can we communicate from Earth to space? Hey, um, we have um, antennas on the space station, and those antennas that point actually higher up than the space station is way further out. There are satellites, communication satellites. And so our antennas point at the satellites and communicate with the satellites, and then the satellites bounce our voice back to Earth. And so that way we can communicate with people on the ground, just like with you today. Nice. These next questions are from Children's Wisconsin, located in Milwaukee. How do you sleep without floating around? Uh, so we each have um, we each have our own crew quarters. It's like a, a small little closet almost that uh, is our personal space. Uh, it has little doors on it and. Uh, everybody does it a little bit different. Uh, some of us uh, use bungee cords and strap a, a sleeping bag to the wall, and, it, and then when you zip yourself up in the sleeping bag, it keeps you in one spot. Uh, but some of us also like to just float around inside that, uh, and so their sleeping bag just free floats, and you get in there, and you just kind of relax, and your arms do something like this, and uh, you float around, but it's not a real big space, so you don't have to worry about you know getting lost when you wake up or anything like that. <laughs> Samantha's demonstrating. Um, okay, what do you do in space for fun when you're not working? So we, we play with our toys, as you can see. Um, we also, many of us like to take pictures. We have a fantastic place on space stations called the Cupola, where we can look out the window, and we like to take pictures and videos so we can share that with uh, folks like you on the ground. Um, we also obviously like to hang out together as a crew. We are, you know, up here, we are also, you know, not only each other's work colleagues, but also each other's friends, and in a way, each other's family. And so, um, especially on the weekends, we hang out a lot together. Um, we like to watch movies, and uh, of course, in our free time, we also take the time uh, to make phone calls uh, to our uh, loved ones, to our families and friends uh, down on Earth. Nice. How do you brush your teeth, uh, and, take, and how do you take a bath and shower in space? 
Oh, boy, do I wish we could take a shower in space. Uh, that is one of the things we miss. Uh, shower, uh, sh showers and baths are very much reliant on gravity. Uh, and unfortunately, we don't have that, uh, that ability up here. But what we do, uh, it, we use, you know, wet, damp washcloths and things like that, almost like a sponge bath. And that's how we keep ourselves clean. Uh, during the day. Uh, brushing, uh, brushing teeth is uh, very similar, uh, but again, you know, if you spit your, uh, your toothpaste out into a sink, that requires gravity, and so that is something that we have to manage a little bit differently up here, whether it's into a cloth or something like that. But the actual brushing of your teeth is pretty much the same up here. Uh, and then taking care of hair is a little different, too, when it comes to uh, using shampoo and things like that because we don't have a shower we don't have a way to rinse it out and so uh, we have to use little water bags uh, and kind of squirt it into our hair and then use a towel to dry it off what is your favorite planet if each of you could uh, describe that all right i am obliged to tell you that my favorite planet is mars because I have this crewmate of ours, Jessica, we call her Wadi, who is a geologist, and she's worked a lot on Mars and knows everything about Mars, and so she would be very disappointed if I didn't tell you that all of our crew thinks that Mars is the best. <laughs> okay, Bob, are you gonna say the same thing? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I think it's, uh, I, I, I agree, Mars is awesome, and certainly that's the way, uh, that's, you know, where NASA is going, and that's, uh, you know, we're looking to go and explore there. Uh, but honestly, one of the things uh, that really amazed me when I got up here is how amazing the Earth is. And so looking, I think that truly is my favorite planet. You know, looking back at it now, it is the most beautiful thing out there. Uh, there's the black of space and uh, some other amazing things out there, but the blue marble that is the Earth is absolutely incredible. And so that is my favorite planet. Nice. Uh, Comer Children's Hospital in Chicago asks, what is the capacity of the International Space Station? Yeah, that's a good question. And there's a lot of different ways to measure that. Um, I, uh, an analogy that I, I've heard quite a bit is that it's about the size of kind of a standard American three bedroom house. Uh, and so that's about the, you know, the volume that we have here that we live and work in uh, during the entire duration that, uh, that we're here. Um, we typically have seven crew members up here. I think there've been as many, what's the high number? 13, yeah, maybe 13 when the space shuttle was up here. Um, you know, so we, we've had a lot of people uh, on board. We were had 11 when we first got up here, and then when we uh, when we hand over with our replacement crew here in uh, the next month or two, uh, we'll have 11 more people up here as well. So those are exciting times and uh, a lot of fun uh, having that many people on board. Nice. Uh, Mount Sinai Kravis Children's Hospital in New York asks, is uh, is it ever scary to be in space, and how are you not scared? Yeah, how an interesting question. I, I don't think that we find it scary. Um, it's, uh, you know, the space station is our home, is uh, a little bit special. And obviously it's in a very special environment because we're up here in space and outside of space station, humans cannot survive. Uh, and so we rely on this wonderful machine that surrounds us to keep us alive. Uh, but we know that we have a lot of guardian angels, all our uh, flight controllers on the ground. They get a lot of information from space station all the time. Like space station talks to them, kind of via the satellites that we were talking about earlier. All the satellites, not only they bounce back our voice, but they also bounce back all the information about space station. And so they make sure that you know space space station is healthy, so that you know space station can keep us healthy. And so you know we we we're not really scared about being in space. We actually enjoy it. Great. Can can you describe a little bit? Uh, the trip from Earth to the space station as you know, as far as you feel taking off in the rocket. And I'm not sure if both of you have uh, experienced reentry yet, but if you could ex elaborate on that as well. 
Yeah, so this is my first space flight, so I only know half of the journey uh, so <laughs> far. Uh, Samantha, this is her second space flight, so I'll let her talk about uh, re-entry. Uh, but the uh, the experience on launch was pretty, it was just absolutely amazing. Uh, our crew flew up on a SpaceX Falcon 9 rocket aboard a capsule uh, named Freedom, and it was amazing. When the engines lit, uh, the rocket started vibrating. You could tell we were moving right away, uh, and we just started getting faster and faster, and about two and a half minutes in, uh, the first stage uh, shuts off, and it's instantaneous, and so we go weightless for about five or six seconds while the stage separates, and then the second stage lights off, and we start getting pushed back in our seat, and that was the crazy part. That last, like, two minutes of the ride was just phenomenal because we were accelerating so fast and right around the time where it almost feels like you're out of control and you're just accelerating uh, at an incredible rate, it shuts off again and you're in orbit and it was absolutely amazing. And then that was our chance to unstrap and go look out the window uh, and see the, you know, the beautiful planet below us. So it was absolutely an amazing experience. Yeah, and uh, re-entry is, is quite a ride as well. Um, you know, what happens is that we are up here and we fly really, really fast. Uh, do, do, how many miles? 17,000. 17,000, sorry, I know it in kilometers. 17,000 yeah. <laughs> miles per hour. Um, yeah. So that is an incredible velocity. It means that we, just by virtue of moving that fast, we have a lot of energy that is stored within us, within our bodies, within our uh, space vehicle. And so what we have to do to come back down, we have to get rid of all that velocity. And the way we do it is we use the atmosphere to do that. Just the drag that you generate by digging into the atmosphere slows you down. Now, where does all that energy go? It has to go somewhere, right? Uh, and so you can even see it where it goes. It goes into heat. So the atmosphere around you heats up so much that you look out the window and you literally see flames dancing outside of your window, which is pretty amazing. And that slowing down also means that you are really pressed hard in your seat, kind of like during launch, right? You know, when the rocket launches you, you have that acceleration that pre feel, it feels like you're pressed down into your seat. And you feel the same when you come back, except that in that case, it's the atmosphere slowing you down. So that when you, um, you know, open the parachute, you're not that fast anymore. And then the parachute slows you down that last bit. And then you fall on my first flight. I landed on solid ground in Kazakhstan. And this time I will uh, have this new experience of landing in water. So I guess it's not landing anymore. It's a splashdown. Thank you. Well, that's all that we have. Um, I do want to tell you, uh, Scott Kelly is a friend of mine, and, and uh, he texted me this morning and wanted me to say hello to you both. Um, on behalf of all the children watching right now in the children's hospitals, uh, I want to say thank you to my children watching at home. Um, thank you for your time again and, and for everything that you both do for the space uh, program. Well, thank you so much. Uh, it's an honor to get to speak with you. Uh, we really enjoyed our time uh, with you today. Uh, and to all the kids out there, you know, our thoughts and prayers are with you. And uh, we just thank you for the inspiration that you are and the courage that you all show uh, as well. And uh, we really appreciate the chance to get to spend some time with all of you today. Thank you, Bob. Thank you, Samantha. Station, this is Houston ACR. That concludes the event. Thank you. Thank you to all participants from Lollipop Theater Network. Station, we are now resuming operational audio communications.